So viewers, welcome to Shikshaarthi. Today's our topic is logarithms. Now one of the most important topics when you are dealing with powers, a big powers. What is the use of logarithms? You will come to know after the definition. Once the definition is known to you. What is the definition? The definition says if you have a to the power of x is equals to n. What does that mean? You are writing a in terms of a and x. In terms of a and x in the sense, if you know a and x, you can find the value of n. So writing n in terms of a and x is what we can say. Now if I send this x to the other side, I can say same thing as a is equal to n to the power of 1 by x. Now what is happening? I am writing a in terms of n and x. So in the previous case, if you observe there are 3 a, n and x. There are 3 things over here which I am using. So I can write n in terms of a and x. I can write n in terms of a and x. I can write a in terms of the other 2 that is n and x. Now you tell me the method to write x the method to write x in the form of or in terms of a and n and observe the position of x according to the given here the position of x is the power position that means if you understand the concept now I am trying to find the value of power in terms of the other two values given to me so I want to know x is equals to in terms of a and n so in such cases, we use logarithms and here we write the same thing as if given a to the power of x is equals to n, then the power value that is x will be equal to log n base a. Now you are able to write the power, the value of x in terms of n and a. How do we read this? It's called log of a number with a base a log of a number with a base a so we need to understand now we can write a in terms of n and x i can write n in terms of a and x and also i can write x in terms of n and a with the help of logarithms so basically i can make it a simple way to understand this in order to make the uh, effect of powers or in order to reduce the effect of powers, we can use logarithms. If you have a big powers, any, any type of powers given to you, we can handle it properly with a logarithms. So you might have heard about logarithms earlier also, but this definition plays a major role while solving the problems in logarithms also. So we should not ignore this definition. So I'll repeat once again, or let us have some examples. Better is to have an examples, okay? Like for example, we all know, uh, say 6 to the power of 3 is equal to 216. So now, I, if I write the same thing here, then 3 is equals to log 216 base 6. With respect to 6, in 6 powers, 6 power 1 is 6, 6 power 2 is 36, 6 power 3 is 216. So when I am writing base 6, when taken 6 as a base, which power of 6, which power of 6 will be 216, that will be the value over here. So that is the use of logarithms, if you please follow this, okay. So another one, 2 to the power of 5 is equals to 32 if I say. That means here 5 is equals to log 32 base 2. So since the base is 2, so which power of 2 is 32? If anyone asks you, if which power of 2 is 32, then definitely it is 5. So you can see the use of this, the value given as number with respect to the base will be which power. So technically you are trying to find the value of what? Powers. So you are dealing with powers. This makes the usage of powers easy or this makes the effect of powers very easy. I mean, we can reduce the effect of powers also very easily and we can enjoy this topic. So for better simplifications, we use logarithms also. Okay. So let's see some more examples where this can be useful. You can try these on your by yourself. Okay. So try all of you. 
like 1, 3, 3, 1 if I say and I gave root 11 over here, try what it can be. Similarly, if I say log, say 256, log 256 upon root 2, if I say, then what exactly can be the value? Similarly, if I say log 81 to the base 3 root 3, if it is. See, you know 3 power how much is 81, but can you say same 81 can be written as how much? I will try to explain you. 3 to the power of how much is 81, I think many of us can easily say. But 3 root 3 to the power of how much is 81, little difficult to find out. Now there, the logarithm can be easy for us. So if you write this in the logarithmic form, we may get some fraction or some kind of a decimal where we can easily get this answer. So I hope you people all got this. Let us see how to solve these answers here now. If I take an x over here, friends, for example, then if you convert this into the normal form, what is normal form, friends? I'll take it in this way. Please remember this, this form if you write, if you write it in this form, I am trying to highlight this. If you write in this format, this is called as exponential format or exponential form, right? If I'm writing like power and base, exponential form. And this one, if I highlight again, this one is called log form or logarithmic form, you can say. So converting from logarithmic form to exponential form, converting from exponential form to a logarithmic form also plays a significant role in this topic here. Let us see the questions which I said earlier. This question, this is right now in the logarithmic form. So if I wish to convert it to exponential form, what I'll get? I'll get this 1331 is equals to this, the base root 11 will become the base on the other side and x will become a power. So whatever the value we are expecting here, that is always in the power position. Please remember that. Okay. So this is we know as 11 to the power of 3, 11 cube and this one is 11 to the power of x by 2 because of square root. Square root means by 2 you know in the power notation. Now if you can see the bases are equal, I can say 3 is equal to x by 2 and the value of x is how much friends? 6. So here the value of x is 6 is what I can say here in this case. Similarly the other question if you see, the other question is if I take this as something like p then 256 is equals to root 2 to the power of p this is 2 to the power of 8 is equals to 2 to the power of p by 2 and 8 is equals to p by 2 the value of p will be how much 16 is what you get here in this case is that clear right so let us see now this one this one and the given question to us is or else i'll take it on the other slide take it on this here the question was log 81 base 3 root 3. So let me take this value as something like k and then 81 is equals to 3 root 3 say 3 root 3 to the power of how much k. Now what is simplest value of 3 root 3? 3 root 3 is nothing but 3 power 1 into 3 power 1 by 2 overall it is 3 to the power of 3 by 2. Base is same power should be added if I apply 1 plus 1 by 2 is equal to 3 by 2. So this is 3 power 4 friends is equals to 3 to the power of it's 3 by 2 whole to the power of k can be written as 3 to the power of 4 I mean sorry 3 to the power of 4 of 4 is equals to 3 to the power of 3k by 2 is what you get 4 is equals to 3k by 2 once you compare the bases and powers so if you cross multiply the value of k will be 8 upon 3 is the value so here 3 to the power of this implies this implies what what we understand the final k value we got 8 root 3 if you write in the power notation it is 3 root 3 to the power of 8 by 3 will be equal to 81 is what you are trying to say now for any base we can know for what power value it can be 81 instead of 3 root 3 imagine if i would have given 3 I would have given root 3 or could have been given anything else like 9 root 3 I could have given I could have given anything else for 27 I could have given base so this base base is important with respect to the base I'll get the different different values for k 
So overall, I understand the concept here. When we are taking this logarithms, we need to remember that we are dealing with powers and to get the large values of powers, to make the things of powers easy, the subject of powers easy, we use logarithms. So that is a basic concept here, which we need to understand. Hope you understood the example still now what we have discussed it. Now further going here, logarithms to more to understand about logarithms, logarithms will be of two types, basically two types of logarithms are there. So let us see what are they. Logarithms are of two types friends. One is called natural logarithms and the other one is called common logarithms. Natural logarithms and common logarithms. What is natural logarithms? If you have a number with base E, base E, what is E value? E is 2.71856 is the E value and so on. It's an irrational value. This is actually called as exponential constant. E is known as exponential constant. So the value of E is 2.71856. I want you to remember this number friends. In my previous examples also, in the previous sessions also I have discussed about this E. Exponential constant, irrational value, very uh, useful point here in this case. Okay, I want you to remember this number. Many again, many of the times the examiner may not give us this value because it is important to remember. Now here, log n base 10. Now please listen to this very carefully. If your base is 10, then it is called common logarithms. So this is called natural logarithms and this is called common logarithms. And this one common logarithms is by default. Why I'm saying by default here friends, if suppose I just say log 3 and base is not mentioned, then by default the base is 10. If I say any other value, for example, if I say 112 log 112, by default the base will be 10. The 10 need not be given over there. So by default the logarithms will have a base as 10 every time. But is it necessary that only these two are bases? I mean, can it be only base E or base 10? No, logarithm can take any base, like base can be 2, 3, 7, 8 or any other number base can be. So depends on the base, the logarithms will have their own respective values. Clear? Now let us understand what is the significance of this common base and natural base and what are the rules we have about logarithms in the next slide. Okay, so let us move on to next point here. Rules of logarithms. Rules of logs. Okay, what is the very first rule my friend? What could be the value of log 1 to any base? I don't know the value. Okay, so let us use the definition. What definition says friends? Log n base a is equals to p then n is equals to or I beg your pardon I used x if you remember in the beginning so I'll just take x so that to avoid confusion then this could be n is equals to a to the power of x you know you remember this this is exponential form and that is logarithmic form right now my given stuff is logarithmic form so here this can be if I take it as x then 1 is equal to a to the power of x now tell me for what value of x it will be 1 0 correct so what is the main point we have learned here log 1 base a is 0 so for any base it is any base a can be any value here so log 1 base a is 0 that's the first point so likewise you can prove majority of the rules by using that concept here okay so it's very important to understand similarly what could be log a base a if it is if it is log a base a then what same thing we'll do we'll take it as x then converting into exponential form a is equal to a to the power of x and the value of x will be how much one the value of x will be one so what is understood friends log a base a is always equal to one so the number and the base both are same then it is going to be one i guess you all understood before i said i mean described all this if the power is same I mean one then only the base value is equal to the value itself right so based on that we can get the second point over here right now let us see I'll write one by one all of them first one log one 
what we have observed log 1 base a is equals to 0 log a base a is equals to 1 third one log m into n base a can be written as log m base a plus log n base a that's your third rule next one fourth one log m upon n base a is equals to log m base a minus log n base a you get it here the fifth one friends okay it's uh, p into p into log m base a is equals to log m base a here power is p so this will become a power over here or you can take it as a versa wise case okay so log m to the power of p base a this power will be in front of the logarithm okay similarly further if you say uh, point number six you can say here now if i take p by q log m base n if it is p by q sending it before there it will be log m to the power of p and n to the power of q remember the denominator here will be the power for base power for base that is important seventh one over here then a to the power of log m base a will be equal to m we can say a to the power of you can observe this and this both should have the same value here eighth one a to the power of log c base b a to the power of log c base b can be written as c to the power of log a base b you can understand the logarithm will have the same base b log b log base b a and c can interchange their positions this is also possible okay ninth one if i say log m base n this can be reciprocal as log n base m when you take a reciprocal of this I mean if you send it to denominator I mean to say then there will be an interchange between the number and the base and tenth one here could be log m base n can be written as log m base a upon log n base a as two different logarithms I can split the value of number and the base as two different logarithms by using a common base now look at it, all the 10 points which I have given over here, you will find it one thing common. In every case, the base value plays a major role. You see the base is same, here the base is same, here the base is same. You can observe the bases are playing a major role here, here the base is same. So please observe, this overall rules of logarithms are based on the base values which plays a magnificent, I mean a very very important role in this case. Okay, so now further let us move on to the next part of this session. Now let us see what is the significance of base and based on that how the values will change and what is the other, what are the other rules we have in logarithms. Okay, so let's start about the other rules of logarithms. If you have something like this, log m base a is equals to log n base a is given to us. Okay, uh, log n base a is given to us. There are two conditions here. Case one, if you say a is equal to b, then definitely m will be equal to n. And case two, if you say m is equals to n, then a value will be equal to b value this is one of the most important rules in logarithms whenever you are doing a comparisons you have to use this rule okay the another rule here in logarithms is the very important one in fact is log when you say log n base a this n value cannot be negative it cannot be negative so please understand this n value cannot be negative that means logarithms is not defined for negative values logarithms is never defined for negative values okay the value of c for example if i am showing this on a number line my friends minus infinity 0 1 and plus infinity we have a number line correct normally our number line from minus infinity to plus infinity 
logarithm cannot be zero, but logarithm can be defined between zero and one. Can be defined at one. What is log one? If you remember, zero, right? So logarithm is defined at one also. The value is zero, and logarithm for greater than one also can be defined. So logarithm can be defined from greater than zero values, not negative values. Logarithm will not take negative values. Ultimately, I would show one important graph here on logarithms. If you understand by graph, if you understand by graph, it is always important to know the things by graph only. If you observe, if I take the value of x, this is a log x graph. Log x graph. Okay. Now, based on this graph, if I take the value of x as zero, there is a value. No. So here, after zero, zero to one, there are certain values for. The graph and above one at one the graph value is how much you see zero at one the value of y on y-axis it is zero so that means log zero is sorry log one is zero and after one the value becomes positive so this graph will be from zero to one and then one to infinity kind of a values so logarithm will never take a negative values and this is a graph for your logarithms. So guys, please understand logarithms is a little, uh, little kind of a uh, pure maths kind of a subject. If you need more of information on this, my, my next video will give you a lot of information about what is going to be the other points, what is characteristic value, what is Bantisa, how to find the values and whatever questions are coming. Important is always to know what type of questions are coming. Okay, so till then, see this revision if you do once again or read this again and again, see the video, try to understand what is discussed in this video. I'll share one more video with you about the other points about logarithms and the problems. Take care. Thank you.